The first problem from chapter 16 is going to be a strong base, strong acid problem, or I guess more of a strong acid, strong base problem. And it's going to be a two-part video, so be sure to watch both parts of the video. This is number 67 in the back of the book, and right now it's just A and B, and then in the next video we'll do C, D, and E. But basically this whole video is going to like, talk through the five big steps of a strong acid, strong base problem. So be sure you can understand each different step because you don't know which step will be on the test or all of them could be on the test. So to start off, the first question could be an initial pH question. Now if it's a strong acid, strong base, the only thing at the initial place... Oh, I'm also going to draw what it kind of should look like. So our titration curve should kind of, is going to have pH and volume of the titrant strong base. So it should kind of look... We're going to have this up and that, right? It's going to be very sharp, and there's going to be a strict point right here at the equivalence point. And the pH at the equivalence point will always be 7. This is a strong. So that's another number to keep in mind. But we will get to that in a minute. All right, but the initial pH, at this point, we only have strong acid. So it's just like we did last chapter. The pH will always equal negative log of hydronium concentration. Now it's just how do we get hydronium concentration. In this example, we only have strong acid right at the beginning. So our concentration of hydronium is simply the concentration of our acid. So pH will equal negative log of 0 0.175. And that is a very tiny number, and it's actually only 0 0.757. So our pH isn't even 1 initially to start with, right? But that makes sense. It's a really strong acid. Okay, so then we're going to try to find the volume required to reach the equivalence point. The volume required is going to be the volume of base needed to be added, right, to on this point to get right here. So what, at the equivalence point, we have to remember that millimoles of strong acid will equal millimoles of strong base, or moles, right? But we're just going to use millimoles because that's what we're used to. So, remember we have a fancy formula that does this calculation for us, and it's always going to be mole M1V1, right? Molarity 1, volume 1 will equal M2V2, and we're going to solve for V2. Because remember, moles equals molarity times volume, so that we've set mole to mole equal to each other. Now, what is our M1V1? Uh, we're going to do the acid side, because that's what we have both of. So we have 35 milliliters is our V1, sorry. M1 is going to be 0 0.175 molarity, right? And we can put in milliliters, and we're going to put in another molarity for the base, and our V2. And remember, we can keep it in milliliters and millimoles. That's easier to work with, so I'm going to do that. So if we solve this out for V2, we're going to get roughly... Thirty point six milliliters of KOH is required to get to the equivalence point. So remember, initial pH for a strong acid, strong base is just negative log of the concentration, and M1V1 equals M2V2 is how we're going to always solve for the equivalence points because remember, both the moles are equal. 